Hello, my name is Mario Viviani and I manage developer marketing and evangelism for Amazon devices in Europe. I'm very excited to be here today to talk to you about how you can design apps in the age of media streaming, and in particular, how you can optimize your content for TV. Designing a great customer experience for your TV apps is more important today than ever. Customers of streaming media players can access, navigate, and find out about content in new ways, and the numbers of customers doing so is skyrocketing. Earlier this year, Amazon announced that Fire TV reached the milestone of more than 40 million monthly active users. These are big numbers, and the whole video streaming industry is actually growing. In order to satisfy this increase in demand, as developers, we need to keep innovating constantly on behalf of our customers. There are hundreds of thousands of TV shows and movies on Amazon Fire TV, and they come from different sources, from Amazon Prime Video to third-party apps developers. But how can developers actually create apps for Amazon Fire TV? Creating apps for Amazon Fire TV is actually quite straightforward. Fire OS 7, which animates all of Amazon devices, like Fire TV and Fire Tablets, is actually based on Android 9 Pi, which means developers can use standard Android API and development tools like Android Studio to build apps for Amazon Fire TV. Before we jump straight in, here's a summary of what we're going to see today. We're going to dive deep into understanding the 10-foot experience. And the first step, of course, is onboarding and registering uh, your uh, accounts, your uh, customers. So we'll go into onboarding and registration. We'll see how you can reduce friction in the sign-up experience. And then we'll start looking at engagement and retention, and we'll specifically dive deep into the TV app design UX and UI guidelines. We'll then see how you can use the Amazon Fire TV developer tools to measure performance, how you can then add uh, conversion and monetization tools to your apps, and uh, we'll also see what templates uh, you can use if you want to start building your Amazon Fire TV uh, app and how you can do that in just a few minutes. So let's kick this off and start looking at how we can better understand the so-called 10-foot experience. The 10-foot experience is uh, everything that identifies the uh, so also so-called lean back experience. So when you are 10 foot away from the screen, in this case, from a TV screen, uh, you're lying on a couch and you're consuming and accessing content. There are three so-called phases of funnel conversion, three phases that every new customer will go through when engaging with your app. The first step is onboarding and registration, is when they will start using your app. The second is engagement and retention, is when they start consuming the content, they engage with the content, and then you need to look at strategies to retain this customer. And last but not least, of course, there is conversion or monetization. So is uh, when you want your customer to actually take an action and um, possibly monetize through a lot of different models. They could be subscription, uh, they could be in-app payment as well. Let's look at the first one of these phases, which is onboarding and registration. When it comes to creating your onboarding experience, basically the experience that all the new customers will be prompted, there is always the uh, what we can identify as the content showcase dilemma. And this poses a question, which is, should I register my user or sign up my user before I give them visibility on what is the content of my app, or should I showcase the content in order to entice them and to attract them and have them uh, then sign up for the content. There are a lot of different 
permutations of this and it really depends on what type of content do you have and in general what is your marketing strategy however if we can give you an advice we saw that best conversion usually come when you can somehow showcase the enough content maybe even uh, provide access to um, pieces of content maybe for free as a free trial and then allow the user to uh, register and sign up this step of showcasing the in-app content before and then provide the user registration usually uh, allows for better conversions. Once we made a decision about how we actually want to onboard the customer, if you want to showcase them some content and then have them sign up or vice versa, in any case, there will be a situation in which we need to onboard the customer to actually have them sign up and register for our service. And this is one of the steps where uh, actually a lot of customers could encounter friction. And that is because they actually need to provide their data uh, to the app. Think about a classic sign-up form like the one that you see uh, on the screen now. Uh, customers will actually have to add a lot of information in there. They will uh, they need to add the name, maybe um, surname, then email address, password, password confirmation, and sometimes even the postcode. Uh, from some tests that we ran at Amazon, uh, we saw that on average, when customers have to fill up these forms, this takes them around 300 clicks, uh, which they have to complete using an on-screen keyboard. And that's one of the main differences with completing a form on a mobile device or, or through a computer. And the reason is that there is no touch screen on a TV interface. Everything will need to be completed through an on-screen keyboard, which can become a tedious um, exercise if the customer actually has to fill up a lot of uh, these fields. So how can we solve this problem? On Amazon Fire TV, there is a great functionality, which is called Login with Amazon, which is a feature that you can add to your apps. Login with Amazon allows a customer to sign up um, and, and share their credentials with an app uh, just with a few clicks, actually with two, three clicks and without the need of using an on-screen keyboard. The great advantage of using login with Amazon is that customers, when they're using an Amazon Fire TV, they are technically already logged in with their Amazon account, which provides name, an email address, and actually even the postcode of their register address. Uh, so you can actually use uh, login with Amazon to share these credentials um, from the customer down to your app. The customer will be prompted just one screen when they click on login with Amazon, which is what you see here. Uh, and this UI will actually prompt what is the information that the customer is sharing with the app. So in this case, the name and the email address, then the customer just need to click I agree and it's done. Login with Amazon uses what are called scopes. Uh, which are basically tags that uh, define what informations are shared between the customer and the app using login with Amazon. Uh, the uh, first one and main one and mostly used by developers is called profile, uh, which shares three information, the email, the name and the user ID. And we'll see in a second what the user ID is. But since we're sharing uh, a an email and a name, which are unique identifiers of that specific customers. This requires a confirmation screen to be shared um, with, uh, with the customer. The second scope that uh, developers can use is called uh, profile user ID. And here the only information that is shared is the user ID, which is uh, actually a tag that is uh, automatically generated uh, by um, for every company that creates website uh, or apps for login with Amazon, uh, they uh, receive the same user ID for a specific customer. So basically the user ID is unique per developer and will be different if two developers are trying to identify the same customer. And that is done uh, for security reasons. Uh, 
Um, and uh, the interesting bit of using profile user ID uh, as a scope uh, is that because no personal information is requested, the user will actually not be presented with a consent screen uh, the first time that they log in. So if you use profile user ID uh, and your app doesn't require, uh, let's say, an email address and a name, um, well, you can just use the uh, user ID. Uh, the uh, customer will click on login with Amazon and will go straight uh, into the content and it will be logged in. The third one uh, is postal code. Um, with this scope, uh, the uh, customer will actually just share only their postcode. Um, this, uh, since the postcode is a um, personal information and unique identifier, it also requires a confirmation screen for the customer. And if you require all of these information, so you can actually combine the scopes and build a combined scope. Uh, in this case, for example, if you put down profile postal code, uh, it will retrieve all the information that we've seen before, the email, the name, the user ID, and the postcode. If you want to know more about logging with Amazon, uh, you can uh, visit the website login.amazon.com and you can find all the information about how you can add Login with Amazon to your apps, but also to your websites as well. Login with Amazon actually supports uh, most mobile uh, platforms and is also available for web. Now let's say that you have signed up your customers, maybe uh, using Login with Amazon. Now what what can we do? Well, now it is the time to engage with our customers and to find ways to retain uh, their attention, to keep them engaged with our content. The best way to do this is, of course, to delight and engage uh, with the customer, is to provide a delightful customer experience. The best way to provide a consistent and a great experience is actually by following the so-called uh, TV app design UX guidelines. There are some suggestions and some recommendations about you, how you build the user experience of your apps in order to uh, create a delightful experience for your customers. First of all, you have to think that you're building for a 10-foot UI. That means that your customer will be 10 feet aka three meters uh, away from uh, the, the display, it can be even more actually in some situations. Uh, so the assumption that you can do is uh, that the content that you're putting on screen needs to be very different from you, what you would put, for example, on a phone or in a tablet um, application. And that's because in general, the way that customers are going to engage with this type of, of content on your app is going to be different. And the way they consume this content is going to be different as well. Another important uh, assumption is that the interaction is remote based. The type of uh, engagement that the customer will have with the content is not via a touch interface. Everything will need to be uh, moderated by the use of, of a remote. Uh, hence, the way that you build the navigation of your app will need to change based on the fact that the user will, uh, will need to navigate it with an up, down, left, right, and click type of navigation. So here are some general design principles to create a great user experience on a um, TV device. First of all, it needs to be clear, simple, and visual. You want to create a UI that is not cluttered with too much information. It is always very, very clear uh, what uh, the customer has selected, for example, what are they about to click on, and uh, how they can navigate to that specific part. Second thing is to limit design elements on screen. You don't want to have too many buttons or uh, too many call to actions on a single screen. Place important content first. It needs to be very clear what is the main content of the app and what is the action that the user can perform. 
focus on consumption uh, keep in mind that uh, in particular here we're talking about a, a tv app so the content is going to be consumed is mostly going to be media and entertainment uh, which he, which has a, a flow to it and um, customers will likely going to consume multiple pieces of content in a row so focus on allowing your customer to easily consume content in the best way possible and again, I want to reiterate this design with remote in mind, try to reduce the number of clicks as much as possible. Now that we've navigated through some user experience guidelines, let's see what are the specific TV app design UI guidelines that you can take in account when you're building your app to create a more compelling interface. Screen size and resolution are a very important factors to take in account when you are building your application. First of all, keep in mind that you know screen size can vary uh, from uh, you know if if your customer has a uh, 23 inch uh, screen TV or if he has a massive you know 65 inch. Um, uh, television. However, uh, Fire TV actually has very specific um, resolution and density that you need to be aware of when you're building your applications in order for you to provide the best user interface possible. In particular, uh, Amazon Fire TV outputs um, the user interface at full HD resolution, actually at uh, 1920 pixel per 1080p uh, pixels. Um, in terms of resolution. So it's a 1080p um, UI. That doesn't mean that this impacts the media content that can be played because Amazon Fire TV, uh, in particular the Amazon Fire TV Stick uh, 4K, for example, is actually capable of uh, displaying content at 4K resolution. But the UI itself, the uh, UI of the Android app, is going to be actually rendered at uh, Full HD. The density uh, is a 320 a DPI density uh, on Android, which ends up into the XHDPI bucket. And uh, the output resolution is actually 960 per uh, 540 DP, which ends up into the uh, large uh, bucket for resolution. The overscan is also another important thing to take in account. The overscan is the space around the displayable area of the screen. So uh, customers can actually go into the settings of their Fire TV and edit the overscan and uh, they can basically shrink or resize the displayable area. This is something that you need to take in account when uh, you're building your application. So not to put um, a lot of important information um, in a place that could be uh, hidden into the overscan area. So it is good practice to build a so-called safe zone. A safe zone is a um, part of the screen where you will try not to put uh, the important items of your app. And the best approach here uh, is to uh, build a safe zone, which is 5% of any uh, edge of the screen. You can see here uh, a safe zone displayed on the main uh, home um, interface of Fire TV, uh, which is highlighted in red, uh, which is again 5% the, uh, from the edge of the screen. You can actually activate uh, and see a, a safe zone on Amazon Fire TV by using the developer tools menu uh, on, on Fire TV. You can do that by uh, uh, going to uh, activating developer options on your Fire TV. Then you will need to hold uh, five seconds, the central button plus the down button on your remote control, and then you click the menu button. And you will see an interface uh, like the one displayed in, um, in the screenshot here. And as you can see, there is a safe zone there. And you flee, if you turn it on, these uh, red bands around the screen will appear showcasing uh, the safe zone. And you can use this um, inside your app to verify that you're um, actually uh, matching the um, standard uh, Fire TV safe zone. It is also important to consider which colors are you using for the UI um, of your of your Fire TV application. Um, 
some colors, uh, in particular uh, cool colors, tend to bleed less on a TV screen than warm colors. Um, so uh, one thing that um, you can, for example, avoid is uh, to use large areas of off-white as well um, in order to avoid uh, uh, too much uh, brightness to, to your screen. Yeah, for example, imagine the, the fact that your customer is viewing some content uh, at night or in the evening, and if you go from playback of content straight into a fully white uh, UI, this can be uh, quite disturbing for your customer size, which might have been adjusted to uh, a lower, uh, lower light uh, setting uh, of, the, of the media playback. So now that we've seen some tips and tricks for UX and UI, let's see how we can actually measure performance. Performance is extremely important um, when you're building your TV app. You don't want an app that is slow in, in using uh, the developer term, a janky uh, um, application. You want a, an application that feels great and smooth uh, when customers are, are using it. Uh, there is a great tool that you can use to measure performance on Amazon Fire TV, which is called System X-Ray. You can activate System X-Ray again by uh, turning developer option on, holding 5 seconds the central button and down button on your remote, and clicking the menu button. And again, similarly to what we did for the safe zone, you can also turn on uh, the System X-Ray feature. If you turn on a system x-ray, this is a small dialogue that will be overlaid on top of uh, what you're seeing on the Amazon Fire TV UI. And the system x-ray actually contains a lot of information. There is a part on the display, CPU, memory, and network consumption. First part of the system x-ray um, on the left is called display. Uh, this showcases a lot of information. So, for example, when you see HDMI mode, it shows the physical height of the display in pixels and the refresh rate in frames per second. Uh, HDCP uh, actually shows the HDCP, which is High Bandwidth Digital Content Protection version used by Amazon Fire TV uh, to encrypt the content that is sent through the HDMI cable to the television. The CPU part actually explains what is the current situation uh, of the usage uh, of uh, the uh, CPUs on the Amazon Fire TV. So uh, there is a color coding here, 0 to 33%, which is marked as low util utilization, is marked uh, in green. Then there is moderate utilization in orange, and then high utilization is shown in red. Then there is memory. Uh, memory allows you to understand how much um, RAM your application is actually consuming. Uh, there is a foreground memory, which is used by the app that is currently in the foreground. Keep in mind that this doesn't take into account GPU usage, but just RAM. Um, then there is other memory, which is all the memory utilized by all the other apps uh, running currently on Amazon Fire TV, and then in white, uh, the available memory, which is the free memory on device. And then there is uh, the last part on the right, which is uh, called Net, which stays for Network. Um, network displays um, a set of information. There is uh, RSSI, which is the received signal strength indicator, which basically shows how strong the Wi-Fi signal is and is uh, me measured in decibels milliwatts, which is the value of radio signal. Then there is system, which measures how many bits per second are being actively downloaded to the device, including both visible and background apps, and then visible, which measures how many bits per second are being actively downloaded by the visible, um, which is also called foreground app. Now we've seen a lot of different information. We've seen how we can onboard, we've seen how we can uh, engage uh, our customers and how we can build a beautiful, delightful UI and, uh, and even how we can measure performance. 
Another important component of your app, of course, is getting to convert your customers or to better say to monetize um, the, uh, your great content. So how can you do that on Amazon Fire TV? There are a lot of different monetization models that you can use to monetize your apps. There is paid app, of course, which is when you ask a customer to pay an upfront price uh, to even download and start consuming your app. This usually is uh, maybe less popular when it comes to media and entertainment apps, but it's definitely an opportunity. Then there is advertisement, which is becoming increasingly popular, uh, in particular for media uh, and entertainment apps, uh, which is usually when you're showcasing some content for free and then you are introducing uh, some um, pre-roll or mid-roll or post-roll uh, video advertisement in your apps. And then there is in-app purchase and subscriptions, which can be uh, rolled up into one, which is probably uh, one of the most popular um, uh, ways of monetizing media content. When you're asking uh, inside the app to the customer to subscribe and to pay for in-app uh, content. Implementing um, in-app purchase and subscriptions on Amazon Fire TV is actually extremely easy. And this is facilitated by the usage uh, for developers of the Amazon in-app purchase and subscriptions API. The Amazon uh, in-app purchase API is actually a great feature because it allows you to, with a single API, to build uh, in-app items and subscriptions and sell them uh, through your app. Why is the Amazon in-app purchase uh, API important and, and easy to use? What are the advantages? First of all, it allows you to uh, provide in-app items, entitlements, and even subscriptions. And if you're thinking about the infrastructure to manage uh, these items, uh, it is actually pretty complex. Think about managing free trials, the payments processing, receipts, and even the rights management. Uh, actually, the Amazon in a purchase subscriptions API takes care of all that. Uh, and makes the management of these features extremely simplified. And also, uh, one of the great features uh, of this API is that um, allows you to use Amazon one-click settings. That means that literally when they're using Amazon Fire TV, your customers are just one click away from making a purchase because uh, most customers, when they are using uh, their, their Fire TV device, they actually already logged in uh, with their payment credentials. Um, so using one-click settings uh, is a great way uh, to allows an easy uh, transactional experience uh, for your customers. If you want to know more uh, about uh, these APIs, uh, please go to developer.amazon.com and then you can download the SDK that you can add to your apps and that's available at developeramazon.com slash docs slash SDK download. But now you would come to me and say, all this sounds great, Mario, but how can I start creating an app from scratch? Uh, that, sounds, that sounds complicated. Well, actually, when it comes to building an app for Amazon Fire TV or an Android app in general, it's actually pretty easy. You can do that in minutes uh, if you already have content that you want to showcase by using um, some developer tools that Amazon provides. The main tool that you can use to uh, build your app from scratch, your Fire TV app from scratch, uh, is actually called the Fire App Builder. Fire App Builder is a plug and play template for creating audio and video apps. It actually allows you to create an app in less than an hour. It's easy, fast, and beautiful. It contains modules, uh, which are plugins, uh, to enable advanced functionality, and we will see them in a second. It handles JSON feeds, branding, and customization. That means that it's very easy to connect the Fire App Builder uh, to the content that you might have in a cloud service, for example, and then to customize the UI accordingly. It supports uh, the Amazon Fire TV family, uh, supports Fire OS uh, and Android. Uh, actually, uh, if you have also an Android TV device um, that is running Marshmallow or app, um, 
the Fire App Builder template will run on these devices as well. One of the great features of the Fire App Builder are modules. Modules are plug and play uh, plugins that you can turn on and off depending on which functionality you want to add to your apps. And there is a variety of those. There is uh, a plugin, for example, for in a purchasing subs and subscriptions, which uses uh, the Amazon in a purchase API that we've seen before. There is a media player plugin that allows you to swap in different types of media players depending on which one you want to use. There is one for social login, for advertisement, and even for analytics. But how does the Fire App Builder actually work? Well, there are basically four main steps that you have to do to configure it. The first one is configuring the feed. Basically, you need to make sure uh, that uh, your content uh, is exposed, all the metadata of your content is exposed uh, in form of a JSON feed or an XML uh, feed. Then you set up what is called a recipe uh, for categories and contents. Basically, you define how you want uh, your uh, content to look like and how the content uh, of your app um, and your service is actually matching the content that can be displayed uh, by the Fire App Builder. Then you can go and easily customize the UI and the modular components and finally uh, launch the app. If you want to know more, uh, you can start today. Uh, the Fire App Builder is actually available on GitHub. You go on github.com slash Amazon slash Fire App Builder. And you can find documentation. I follow the short link on our, our Amazon developer portal. Finally, I want to recap what we've seen today and the three main steps that you need to take in account when you're building and creating your Fire TV app uh, from scratch. First of all, think about onboarding and registration. What does this uh, first experience for your customer look like? Uh, remember to create uh, your app in a way that displays content first, um, that reduces frictions and clicks, and possibly uses a login with Amazon to um, even further reduce friction at sign up level. Then once the customer is signed up, how you can engage and retain uh, with, this, with this customer. Build a great 10-foot UI designed for remote. Keep in mind that the customer will need to use remote to engage with your content. Um, and then follow the design guidelines uh, to um, engage uh, with your customer in the best way. And last but not least, make sure to convert and monetize your customer in the best way, uh, select the right monetization model for your app, and if you're using uh, in-app purchase and subscription, implement this subscription via the Amazon in-app purchase API. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that what you've seen today really inspired you to go and create the next great Amazon Fire TV application. And if you're thinking about creating a new app for Fire TV, or if you already are working on one, and if you have further questions, let's say on, on a technical level or on a business level, please do reach out to us. You can find us at firetvdeveu at amazon.com. Um, just shoot us an email, uh, let us know what you're creating, and if there is any um, question that you might have or any problem that we can help you solve. Uh, if you also want to know more about what you've seen today uh, and find all the documentation about the developer tools that we discussed, uh, you can go on developer.amazon.com and find everything you need to know about Amazon Fire TV. Thank you very much and have a great development with Amazon Fire TV.